I swear, the 2000s made way for some great fashion and style, and I'm really happy to see some of those trends recirculating their way back to the 2020s today. And just like Yu-Gi-Oh!, a franchise that had style that was certainly ahead of its time is the Devil May Cry series of games. So let's take a look at what those characters are working with. Hola, my name is X, and I like to experiment with fashion as well as talk about whatever the hell I want on social media whenever I feel like it. And in this video, I'm going to give you the top five facts that you need to know about the Devil May Cry franchise to give you some factoids that perhaps you may not have already been aware of, but more importantly, to make sure that we're all on the same page as to what's taking place with this franchise and why it's such a big deal. And along with that, I'm going to give you one fashion designer brand that has some style parallels to the clothing within the game. As always, just to make sure that we're keeping this content fashion focus, but also to enlighten you as to some great creativity and designer work that is out there. And then we move into the best part, which is doing a fashion review slash analysis of the various outfits that the characters wear through the different installments of the franchise. And at least as far as my taste is concerned, these characters are serving. There's practically no flaws or fails, in my opinion. But before we get into all of that, I have a few shout outs to give, but I'm going to dedicate one shout out in this video specifically, and that's to Alex for giving me this incredible super thanks on my latest Street Fighter video. Huge respect to anybody who puts their money where their mouth is. Thank you so much for appreciating the unique angle that I try to take with the content. And obviously with this investment, there's plenty more fighting game content to come. We should all be thanking Alex for this investment, including YouTube, because they like to take a huge chunk out these things. But anyway, I hope you're investing and supporting your favorite creators, especially small creators, because every little bit or a lot of it goes a long way in this YouTube game. Anyway, thank you again so much, and I hope you enjoy. All right, let's get into these top five facts that you need to know about the Devil May Cry franchise. First of all, we need to recognize the commercial and sales success that this franchise has had because that's what solidifies it as being such a big deal. As of 2024, the entire franchise has sold over 32 million units worldwide with the latest Devil May Cry 5 installment selling 8.4 million units alone. With this commercial success, this has solidified the series as one of Capcom's platinum titles alongside other games like Resident Evil and Monster Hunter. So I hope that I hope that paints the picture for you. Like this is a big deal. And if they continue along this track, I'm sure they can keep selling millions more with this storyline, creativity and style. What I found interesting about this game is that the original Devil May Cry from 2001 was actually intended to be a prototype for Resident Evil 4. But the developers must have gotten their creative juices flowing and decided to innovate by implementing a more stylish, fast pace action packed gameplay style which is essentially how the devil may cry series was born the unique blend of action and style that they implemented within the game is certainly what helped set it apart from other hack and slash games within the genre but also set the tone for more of those modern games within that genre to come double tapping on that like i said devil may cry had an influence on other games within the hack and slash genre inspiring new titles like bayonetta specifically the fast paced combat system the stylish grading ranks and the ability to switch between character mechanics obviously set the franchise ahead of its time but also set a new standard and benchmark for what games adopted and how they appear within our modern circulation of games today especially within the hack and slash and action adventure genre i especially love when games have the ability to change between characters because that's only what helps enhance replayability and keeps the storyline fresh especially if there's a character you have an affinity toward that is maybe more accessory bringing them into the spotlight is always a good move. Getting a little bit into the storyline, what really makes this game interesting is the internal rivalry between the twin brothers Dante and Virgil. The conflict that these brothers have is at the core of this game's narrative, and they have two very opposing ideologies where Dante's leaning a bit more into humanity and pursuit of that, while Virgil really leans into power and more of that demonic essence that each of them has. This conflict is what shapes the emotional core of the series, which I'm sure has strong resonance with game players and fans of the franchise, but also is what creates a rivalry that is one of gaming's most iconic. And last but not least, 
you know that I have to talk about the fashion and the influence that Devil May Cry has had on its community of gamers and fans. Not only does the game embody a unique fusion of gothic, punk, alternative, and modern aesthetics, it also provides its characters with signature clothing items that help define their identities, but also give them unique looks. We're talking long, dramatic trench coats, plenty of belt and buckle action, but just really strong, intricate fashion and design elements within the clothing that has naturally inspired fashion enthusiasts like myself, but also plenty of cosplayers as well, which obviously makes DM see a great exhibition of how style integrated within gameplay can play a huge part in defining the identities of the characters. So next time someone tries to downplay the importance of fashion within gaming, all you have to do is point to Devil May Cry. Now, as far as fashion designer brands that have parallels to Devil May Cry style, I've already highlighted a few. We're talking Balmain, we're talking Alexander McQueen, we're talking Yoji Yamamoto. But one new one that I thought was very interesting is an Duomomister. So perfect for this. And when I was looking at these images, what really stood out to me were the simplicity and the sleekness in the long coat silhouettes that we get from the different runway outfits. There's even leather texture, plenty of drama, but it just feels very simple and clean. There could be additional buckle and like hardware elements, but I saw even one look that had like a burgundy jacket that was very reminiscent of Dante's red jacket. So this just feels right up the alley and something new that I think that we can all appreciate. But now that we've covered all that great context, let's move into looking at these different outfits that the characters wear with a little bit of a review and analysis. And I'm going to start with Devil May Cry 2 just because we see the outfits from Devil May Cry 1 recirculate into later installments of the game. All right, starting with Dante's signature OG look. We obviously have that incredible red jacket, but it's paired and it's just fully red coordinated with a red vest and some red pants. I love some red pants. I think I've said this multiple times within these different reviews and then plenty of buckle action. I especially love the belt and buckle action across the vest and how that's just nicely mirrored with obviously a belt around his waist and some belts around his thigh and some tall boots, plenty of tall boots within this game. So it's just overall just so chic, iconic. We know who he is, we know what he looks like, and it remains pretty consistent with that red jacket through the different installments. But the new look as of DMC2 is, again, the red jacket, but it almost seems like a leather vest layered over top with like another black leather harness situation across the chest. The pants remain consistent, but the belt kind of buckle action around the thighs is varied and symmetrical across both the thighs. Still consistent tall boots and then a nice statement silver belt buckle, which we will also see in some future looks as well. A little sleeker, a little more clean and less textured, but not any less iconic. But let's talk about this diesel brand casual look, period. Fashion forward, like I said. Like, it's so perfectly well coordinated, effortlessly cool guy. A biker jacket, you can't go wrong, and that is so diesel. Like, the great sleeve details, and there's even like a zip on the cuff of the sleeve. So signature for biker jackets. Loving the scarf. That I think is what just mm, chef's kiss, extra touch of fashion. And you may not know, that, and the low rise jeans are so diesel too, with like a little bit of a belt, but you may not know this. They seem like they're green maybe dress shoes. You don't know how hard it is to find quality green leather dress shoes like that and just how it matches with the jacket. Obsession. I'm going to skip Trish because we also see her look recirculate, I think, in Devil May Cry 4. But Lucia, why or Lucia, whatever. Why haven't we seen more of her? First, loving her, her core default look very ninja-esque, very assassin, very mysterious with that cloak that she has, an excellent crop top. And then the pants are obviously great with a nice tall boot and plenty of utility garter belt action going on around the waist and the thighs. It's overall just pretty simple and clean, but it has a lot of the signature elements of a fly girl. So we absolutely love to see it. And yet another incredible look by Diesel. Like, look at this. So 2000s, like I saw this all over. This was the style. It's just so simple, but cool. I just can't even say that enough. 
love the cuffed element on the jeans and how it just really pairs well with a slightly taller ankle boot love the blouse it has even a little bit of like light fabric detail coming from the chest and just the high popped collar of the jacket and it even, almost seems like she has like a crop shirt under the crop jacket like there's just so much to love in such a simple look but i don't know what this is <laughs> we don't know her i don't know what the no mm, not approved like i don't even want to talk about it to be honest with you i think it's i think it's ugly but let's get into the secretary look it's giving chic high fashion masquerade ball so royal obviously with an aggressively strong purple color palette and loving all of the ruffle details whether it be in the cuffs of the sleeves or just in that amazing high collar that she has which just gives so much more presence and i think just ladders up to that mask that she's wearing absolutely perfectly even seems like we're maybe getting a little bit of like gold trim or lined design throughout the outfit and even just the jacket gives a slightly different silhouette than the nice sleek slim silhouette that she's had in her other looks shifting over to devil may cry 3 dante is starting to give us some strong body confidence what love it and i particularly love number one the change in the red jacket because like i said you can have your strong signature item or personal style but some differentiation from look to look is what is so key in keeping things fresh and that's what we get here and what really stands out to me is just really the belt with those strong silver buckles so stand out and i just really like the different style of pants that he's wearing it seems like they're definitely different and a different style of boot or shoe and i have to talk about the shirtless look too dante <laughs> and i love the necklace once again just to help give a little something up in there instead of just full chest coming at you all skin and just a, this just gives such a great view of the pants and the texture of the pants and the detail that was put into even developing these clo this clothing. We've already seen his original look, but I really like it without the jacket, to be honest. We already know that that's what he's rocking with, but just to kind of see it with not in the mix allows the other clothing items to really shine, more especially that buckle action. The buckle action, like I was saying, that I love within the vest, but also just overall, it just feels so cohesive. And that buckle action is a great element from top to bottom to make sure that we're scanning the entirety of the outfit. And more visible black within the shirt just helps break up some of that red and just gives a little more of that cool dark edge. And the only look that I wanted to look at for Lady, who is the fashion queen in this game, I think, in my humble opinion, is this like full body rider suit that she has. Love it. And I love how there's even almost like a little bit of a flare towards the bottom of the suit. But just look at all the belt action and utility action that she has going on. I love her combination of like sophisticated sassy with something that's like assertive, strong and utility. And that's consistently what she gives and a great set of cleavage on top of that. And you just see that great gold zipper detail. Can't wait to look at more of her. Moving into Devil May Cry 4, we get Nero in the mix. I like that he borrows a little bit of style from Dante and Virgil, but also has a third one that's really unique to him. Starting with this one that I think is the most Dante with all of the red. And what really stands out to me with his core outfit elements are the like hoodie under the hoodie element or shirt underneath the main coat. I love a shirt that like, or something that zips, but like stays zipped, but like zips up from the bottom as well, just to give a little flare and open up so we can get like some belt buckle peeking through and just another glimpse of the pants. And I just like the layering that he has overall going on and just a great pair of boots to match. I mean, same story with the blue variation. It's just in blue, right? I almost prefer the blue variation over the red just looks more fresh and cleaner and just, I don't know, just kind of pops a little bit more with all the different layering and a little more playfulness with the different shades of blue. And I think blue from like a neutral standpoint can go very well with brown. So I like that. But yeah, I think that this one is the most novel look and almost blends the two aesthetics or at least the color palettes together. I really like how it almost feels like a cloak-like design with a little bit of a taller rounder collar and how it fastens a little higher up towards the neck or the chest and how it's just a clean tucked in shirt it just feels more sophisticated especially with the style of the boot 
as well. And we are still getting some buckle action within the thighs. And I like how it's focused on one leg over the other. It just feels more polished and a bit more elevated than the other two looks. The other ones gave more layer. This one just gives more simple refinement. But moving into Dante, this is such a great evolution of his core look. We're still getting the strong statement red jacket, but just with, again, some additional elements like some buttons, I think, towards the top around the collar. And there's just even some interesting texture a little bit more towards the kind of upper body. We're getting some incredible black leather chaps, and I love how it just kind of blends into what's almost like a cowboy-ish style cuff, but we still have those red pants underneath strong statement silver belt buckle like i said but with some additional gold buckles as well this is the one that was on ken within i believe street fighter 5 but this variation where he where it's a black jacket and he has black hair <laughs> whoa he looks i hate to use the word handsome to describe fictional characters tall dark and handsome the white version of it outside of like the tall dark and handsome black version this is so like it's hot period like don't it doesn't even need to show any significant body confidence hot and then i did want to talk about the legendary dark knight look within this section just because it's new and improved i don't feel like it really fits dante's style i feel like it fits virgil's better and we'll see that in a second it's a great design love obviously the exquisite purple and it's purple and red we've already talked about this countless freaking times and just the great ruffle detail it's just giving very vampiric very classic time period type style the shoes the gold buttons the necklace like the tall collar the great like detailed exquisite design throughout the jacket it's a great detail i just don't think it fits dante even in an older man capacity but i wanted to wait to talk about virgil in this section because this is such a great view of his look the padded vest that he has just gives such great texture and is otherwise a nice contrast to a nice, fresh, somewhat flat blue look, but it's not completely flat because we have that awesome light blue kind of highlighted design along the trim or just the edges of the jacket leaning into the collar and down towards the bottom. I love the kind of like buckle action that he has along the cuffs of the sleeves going a little bit up to the elbow. And I just like his incorporation of a bit more like goldish yellow and brown. And the variation in red is okay too. I just feel like it's so Dante and it kind of takes away from who Virgil really is. So obviously prefer the blue version, similar to Nero as well, just liked the blue version over the red like red is dante's but yeah the legendary dark knight looks just feels more fitting to virgil whether it's like maybe it's because his hair was already in that kind of style anyway but it's just because he gives more of like a graceful classic vibe to his style dante feels a little more kind of heavy punk and rugged while i feel like virgil feels a little more high class and elevated and sophisticated which is why this look just feels a little more native to his personal style but let's talk about lady oh my gosh like the cleavage coming through to save us once again loving the blazer look with the hot pants and how it's a coordinated set but then with like a rugged pair of boots so she's like i said she's giving that like sassy sophisticated with like rugged utility it just feels so lethal and effortlessly cool girl effortlessly hot girl effortless style period and the sunglasses too like she already knows what she's working with and even this variation even though i'm like not always so big on just a simple color variation but it does change a lot especially paired with the blonde hairstyle and that blonde and that blue is really having a great contrast and, and relationship with one another the glasses are even a little bit of a different color it just looks so good on her and i just love her details like i just cannot get enough of her but even her original look new and improved i love how there's even like some metal hardware utility belt action that like complements the roundedness of what i assume is a skirt that she's wearing it's kind of hard to tell just with the darkness and all the layering on top but it's that layering that just adds that cool texture and dimension to what could 
ultimately be a very flat and sleek silhouette and look, but she just always has enough decoration in the mix just to keep it fresh and like a nice button up shirt, like, but still plenty of body confidence to go with it. I'm obsessed with her style. Trish also doesn't have to do too much and new and improved. We see with like her corset top that it just number one has like this transparent lightning bolt zigzag kind of split down the middle just to give us a little peekaboo of some additional skin. But also the zipper has that. I looked very closely. The zipper has that same design. So it's just so detailed. The bracer element is also just a nice incorporation of some of that belt and buckle theme and aesthetic that we have across the characters with this nice statement belt around her waist as well. Like she doesn't have to do too much to be that girl. And even with the subtle variation in the color and the glasses, like this looks like Bayonetta. I'm surprised that this was never a Bayonetta alternate skin. She would have rocked the heck out of this. Or I'm sorry, Ceriza, as a lot of people like to point out, but regardless, it's giving Bayonetta overall, whether it's old, new, whatever, she could roll up in the franchise and just start taking people's places and start doing it. Love it. And the red glasses are just such a nice pop against everything too. But what is this? <laughs> like, who is she? I want to know more about her. Wow. On top of the incredible skin tone and body confidence, the tall boots, sleek and so polished. And I love the feathery shoulder pads and how that's like a nice relationship with the softer details, like the ruffles and the sleeves and like the lace of the suit or the skirt or whatever's going on around the hips and the thighs going into the boot. Like what? And the red and the blue is such a nice kind of contrast to another to one another and pop perfectly against all that white. And it just feels so dimensional and textural, despite being such a nice, slim, sleek silhouette. Obsessed with it. But before getting into Devil May Cry 5, I did want to take a quick look at the like, re like refresh Devil May Cry installment non-canon from 2013. Love Dante's new kind of look, hairstyle, everything. We still get a little bit of like the signature kind of reddish jacket, but it's just different with a little bit more black in the mix, but I feel like we still kind of get that this is meant to be his style and just love the overall kind of just, it's still giving diesel. Like this just looks like a diesel runway look, the distressed pants with like a, just, just like a distressed rugged dystopian design and the rugged shirt and the boots. Like, I just like how it's also effortlessly stylish, especially from an alternative perspective. But I think this kind of variation is my favorite. I think the incorporation of some red bands, I don't usually like red bands or like bandage kind of elements, but I feel like they actually add a lot here, especially in the color of red. Like if they were white, it would just kind of be like rags, but it just feels so much more elevated in, in a red color. And that fitted kind of distressed top with the holes in it, it's, and just how those bands really just help his chest pop out. It's almost like a corset. Plenty of belt and buckle action, especially with some pouches, especially the the garter one around his thigh. And I like the, the skinny jeans and they just seem like they have some different kind of patchwork elements and different colors. But I'm sorry, Virgil is the star of this show. This, <laughs> I don't even, I'm speechless. This tail coat with the with the silk padded blue lining. <laughs> and there's just like so many different shades of blue going on in here. The pants are also almost like a nice silk with like a subtle pinstripe design. Like, and there's like a, it's like a jack card, like a, a jack card or something like design on the tail coat. The collar is incredible the way that like silk scarf is around the bicep, the gloves are even like a really soft powder blue. There's, oh my God. But let's move into Devil May Cry 5 and wrap this up, starting with Nero loving this look right here. Blue jacket, red undershirt with like another kind of grayish white shirt underneath that shirt. Like so much, he has such great layering. That is, I think, so definitive to his style. Many of the other characters do too, but I feel like he takes the layering and just kind of runs with it perfectly. The rest of it's kind of like whatever, but just the nice kind of buckle elements that he has on the sleeves, one's rolled up, one's not. But I love this all like white, grayish, off-white one. Amazing. The distressed sweater giving great texture 
to the look that I don't think we've gotten much texture from his outfits with like a black undershirt and like beneath that. So once again, we're still getting strong layering, which is key to his personal style. But then the pants and the boots are pretty consistent, just in a different color or shade. And there even seems to be a little bit more of like a hooded element to this one. Just love this. I will say I'm a bit more underwhelmed by Dante's look in this installment. I mean, Nero is just like the new him at this point. So I just feel like he overall kind of wore it better just with inverse colors. And I don't think I like a navy blue within his outfit. I don't know if this is overly critical, but he is looking older. So this is also a bit more relaxed, a bit more just kind of reclining into a bit more of a simple style, which there's also nothing wrong with that and feels really well applied, just kind of maybe based on plot line or narrative. And the rest of the outfit just kind of looks really similar to Nero. So I'm just kind of like seeing that mirroring effect here. But this variation, maybe it's just the dark hair once again, but like, oh yeah, I'm into this. Just keep me in the realm with Dante of something that's like black and red with maybe a little bit of an, another neutral thrown into the mix. Like this is easily better. And the gold just complements the black overall so well. Black and gold is a classic, luxurious combination. Now V is an interesting incorporation into this series. Also having strong signature elements of core Devil May Cry style with the long statement item, but it's a vest. He's giving more body confidence. Love the incorporation of the tattoos. And I don't usually comment on it, especially within like the tone of these kinds of games, but the sandals are actually a really interesting mix here. I don't think I've really seen too many alternative looks with sandals like this. That is so unique and almost just gives like a more down to earth kind of natural vibe. And I feel like this especially comes to life in the greenish color of this look. Still prefer the black, but the green is also just kind of a nice kind of druid type twist to this style, especially with like some goldish or yellow hints of color thrown in there as well. And he even has like some decoration, like belt or accessory elements towards the side that hang from the waist. So little bits to get into his that doesn't feel too over the top, but still feels well tailored and unique. But Virgil never fails just with the sophisticated, consistently sophisticated love how his like vests or the stuff under his jacket just have great texture. And it just almost feels more structural just with how it's assembled. Loving that top. The rest of it's so flat. It's really just that under vest or shirt or situation that's like giving us the most character and personality in this look. But his pants also do have some interesting details around the knee. So just helping them feel not completely flat and mirroring the kind of design that we get in his blue undershirt or vest situation as well. And then loving this kind of just color switch, we just get a little more vibrance and hue here, which I appreciate not only just with a more subtle color within that same kind of topper vest, but just more so in the jacket, which just really feels much more signature Virgil in that regard. Can't say I like the color of the boots, but they do match well. Like I wish they were maybe a little more yellowish or a little more goldenrod or even mustard. They just feel a little more olive, but what can you do? So Nico, <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I like her outfit, but when she wears the glasses, I cannot help but to see Sarah Palin. I don't know where that's coming from. She looks like Sarah Palin. Ah, and like, I can't unsee it in this look. Like, love the, the short thong. Love the denim hot pants and the cowboy boots. And I think she has some great layering with and I do think that her crops are nicely layered as well. And just like there's a little collar action to kind of almost make it feel a little sophisticated. And of course, she has some great utility belt situation, which is very on trend and theme with the rest of the crew. But yeah, this is much more preferred. Just a different color palette that I think is actually better anyway. And no glasses. <laughs> Slightly different hair color. This is the total vibe for me. I just think she looks so much more effortlessly cool girl here. It doesn't look as like momish, for lack of a better way to put it. Trish cleared. Still the same style, but this just, just more of a crop. Like, not that we would never complain. She doesn't have to do anything too much. Like she is, she almost looks like she's from Final Fantasy 
in this outfit. She looks like a Final Fantasy character here, very much especially. Oh boy, I love this in this more silver metallic kind of textured and sheen with a little bit of red thrown in to kind of help break up the color palette and not just make it completely flat, like silver whitish. Like this is, I like this one so much and her hair color is different. Perfection. The lady came to serve us once again. She is the top model like here. And I like that this is still body confident, but almost just more kind of closed off. And we have to really peer into the look for her skin, which gives great depth. I love that jacket. It's a nice change from like just a typical one flat top look that she gives. So some great layering and the bands across the chest, but she's still giving us like some sort of blouse or button down shirt paired with those incredible short shorts and just like great utility action. She is sassy, sophisticated utility rugged girl, like so consistent. And I love that we can still see that in her style. But I like this version better, just how the black completely surrounds the white blouse. And I even didn't mention this, but I like how the white blouse has like these like pointed elements for like a little bit of a crop. Just such a creative shirt design. And she even has some great sunglasses to just top this whole thing off. She is the moment. All right. I hope you enjoyed going through all of these different Devil May Cry character outfits as much as I did. Such great variety and diversity in style, but still within strong vicinity and proximity to the core aesthetic that we expect and love from the Devil May Cry franchise and series of games. Really appreciate you going through this. Thanks again to the supporters and the, those who invest in the channel. And until the next video, I'll talk to you later.